Now, how often should people be going to the doctor to get regular checkups to make sure that their, their cholesterol is where it should be and to ensure that they're not going to suffer a surprise heart attack like you did? Well, I think it's important to do it at least annually. I would imagine, I'm not a doctor, but I would imagine that if you are at risk for heart disease, they would probably tell you to do it a little bit more often than once a year, but definitely at least once a year. Whenever I give uh, public talks on, I talk a lot about cancer and also heart disease, I always ask my audience. I did it last week for a government department. 70 men were in the audience, and I said, who knows their cholesterol numbers? Only two put their hands up. That's really scary. It's very scary that people don't know. And I always say to people, you keep maybe saying, I'm going to go have it checked and it never happens. Here's the reality. If, if you drop dead, you're gone. But it's your loved ones that will mourn you for the rest of their lives. So don't even just do it for yourself. Do it for the people that you love. Now, in your experience by doing these talks and, and speaking to people about heart health, what are some of the most common misconceptions people have when it comes to heart disease? I think the biggest misconception uh, is where is your heart? After I had that heart attack and I went back to uh, hosting that television game show, I stood in front of those same 200 audience members and I did a test. I said, take your right hand. I'm not quite sure how it's looking on the screen, whether that looks like my left or right hand. <laughs> but take, to take your right hand and put it over your heart and then don't move it around once you've seen where someone else puts their hand. Do you know that most people put their hand here? over there, they, they really grab their, their boob. And that's a misconception. Your heart is not there. Your heart is just off center, sitting over here. But we always watch movies where they pledge allegiance and they do this. Know where your heart is. I had the pain over here and I thought to myself, thank God it's not my heart. And it was. Now since you've had that experience, has your family been more aware of their, their heart health? I imagine it, it were, my, must have been a very scary time for everyone. I think it's more about, that they, they are aware, I mean I've got two young girls who don't understand anything, but uh, my wife is obviously very conscious, she's also quite a fitness fanatic, but I think it also makes you reevaluate what's important in life. It's pretty much a cliche that when you've had a, a life-threatening situation, you, you don't sweat the small stuff, but there's truth in cliches. I really don't sweat the small stuff anymore. It's, it's all about just embracing life. Um, I didn't ha suffer any psychological trauma after it because I'd had cancer before where I'd already had one life-threatening hurdle. So this was just bonus time for me. I didn't, I didn't evaluate and question why me. I did that with cancer when I was 18. This time around it was, I'm in bonus time. I'm here now. Subsequent to the heart attack, my two girls were born. I, got, you know, I look at them every day and I think they, they might not have been here. I might not have been around to enjoy fatherhood. Is psychological trauma something that, that people who suffer from, um, I guess, a life-threatening event, such as you have, usually have? I can't talk for the masses because I, I'm not sure, but I would imagine that there is a lot of psychological trauma that goes through with it. In fact, a lot of that psychological trauma, I think, partly stems from the heart attack itself, but then having to change your lifestyle. That is psychologically traumatic for so many people. If you've been smoking um, X amount of cigarettes a day or you've been eating uh, steak every single day and you suddenly have to change that, you have to cut down on your red meat, that's, that's quite tough for some people. Now this month, of course, we're speaking about heart health and you have your Have Heart campaign. What do you hope people take away from this month? Well, do your basic measurements, and that's the first step in knowing how healthy your heart is. So, uh, big up to Diskem. All right, now World Heart Day is at the end of the month. Are you doing anything special for it? Well, I think the whole month is special. It all culminates in World Heart Day on the 29th of September, and that's partly why September is Heart Month, but it really is about the month-long campaign. Do you know that one in five children in South Africa smoke? One in two adults in South Africa are overweight. You've got to go check your blood pressure, you've got to go check your cholesterol, and you could be saving your life. Those are, those are some scary statistics. Mark, you're doing a great thing for heart health in South Africa. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks. Cheers.